A fourth generation Sanilac County dairy farmer, Wayne Wood is, was elected as the 16th president of the Michigan Farm Bureau at the 2000 annual meeting. Wayne was first elected to Farm Bureau's Board of Directors in 1984 as a director at large and was, and was then elected to represent District 6 on the board. Wayne and his wife Diane are involved in a family partnership that includes his son Mark and his brother Randy. And the family operation consists of a dairy and cash crops. So please join me in welcoming Michigan Farm Bureau President Wayne Wood. Well, thank you, Andy, for that kind introduction. As I've told you before, uh, my father would have liked it, my mother would have believed it. So take that for what it's worth. But you know, I was, I've done some radio interviews this morning, and I've asked, been asked, what are the big issues? And as I listen to you, uh, the acres are getting smaller, or the corn yield is getting bigger at every meal. And yesterday, I spoke to a group and said, you know the corn was a good crop when they're talking about how many bushels they can handle in a day, not the acres. So that really sends a signal. It just proves one thing. The only thing that's normal is the cycle on your washing machine. And as you think about that, it'll sit in. <laughs> but today, we start our annual meeting, and the theme is race to engage. And you know, as we talk about that, we always wonder, what are, we going, what are we going to engage with? What are we racing with? Well, we've had a mission statement that's been there a while. It keeps evolving as agriculture keeps evolving. I want to show you a couple pictures that demonstrate what happens when you don't change. 27 of us had the opportunity to travel to the Ukraine and we've seen such a contrast. If you look up there, this was the style prior to the uh, Soviet Union, when the Soviet Union broke up. But that picture was taken when we were there. These folks have their individual gardens and they go by the side of the road and sell. These folks would tell you they were better off when they were under the Soviet Union because they didn't have to make any decisions and they were free to do this. Then if you change to the next picture, you will see the young people of Ukraine. These were some college students that were walking down in the capital of Kyiv. But look at the change there. I hope you particularly notice the change in the expressions on the face, the hope that was there, the idea that they were going to be free to determine some of their own destiny and determine their, their future. Incidentally, it's the only country in the world that I visited where they are paying people to have more children because they don't, their population continues to, to uh, dwindle. If we could get a look at the mission statement up there, you know, we've recognized some county programs and we do a lot of things. But as we look at the mission statement, we never need to never should lose sight of that mission statement and what it says to us as we go forward. Volunteers carry out the mission of this organization. And it becomes incumbent upon us as leaders to be able to recognize who the volunteers are that have the passion for the issue that we need to carry out or the program. We've seen a lot of people in the County Excellence Awards talking about the promotion education, the Ag in the Classroom, the Project Red. Those are successful because the people who are doing that have a passion for that. As a leader, each and every one of you need to develop a ability to recognize who has the passion, just as a baseball manager recognizes who can back clean up and get the job done. You know, if we move with the race for relevance, we're moving to task force. And those task forces are working very well. And I know a lot of counties have, have went that way. 
And those task forces provide us with not only opportunities to address challenges, but opportunities for success. Michigan Farm Bureau has had many successes during this past year, and I'd just like to highlight a couple of those because you're going to hear more about the successes uh, right after the delegate session starts when our Chief Operating Officer, Scott Piggott, gives his report. But we have some pictures of accomplishments, and those accomplishments are right there. You may recognize some of those people, but those are huge. And those are huge because you took your role as a delegate seriously. And you took it serious enough that you knew what you wanted and you asked for it. And you knew what was capable of getting and we asked for it. And you know, that's a picture of a bill signing. Um, I don't recall which one that is. I think that was the wetland. No, that wasn't a wetland. That was a wetlands bill, I'm sorry. But we had the wetlands, the DNR fees, and the Miss Dig legislation. That happened because, you know what? We have great staff, and three of them are sitting down here that I want to recognize. And if uh, Matt Smeagol, Rebecca Park, and Tanya Ritter would stand up, I'd ask you to recognize them. <laughs> Thank you. They are great people, but those three alone cannot accomplish without you. Think of it this way. In Farm Bureau, those three are our hired guns, and we send them downtown. But what separates them from every other lobbyist in town? Well, other than the fact that we have legislative councils and the rest of them are lobbyists, uh, they have a magazine in that gun. And that magazine is full of bullets named members. And members can make those calls. And mem members can influence the outcome. And that's where each of you make these folks so powerful, so successful when they walk into an office. And it's really thrilling, for me anyway, to have an elected call and say, whoa, shut that down, I'm tired of getting those phone calls. At that point, they recognize the influence that this organization can have if empowered. So never stop making those phone calls, never stop e emails until we have accomplished what you, the delegates, ask us to do in the policy development session that we're going to do here soon the success of getting three priority issues done in one year is unparalleled. Congratulate yourselves for that. You deserve it. <laughs> but you know, getting those done in this age is what have you done for me today? I'm sorry, but that's the world we live in. Well, I have to share with you that we get a lot of things done, but we get a lot of national recognition. Just as the wetlands bill that was mentioned previously, that's a piece of legislation that may, we hope, come the model for other states as we continue to work on the waters of the United States. Those are the kind of things that earn us, you, six of six presidential awards from American Farm Bureau. You earn a presidential award in all the categories that they award them. And they are public policy, education and, pro, education and promotion. I know, for those of you who are involved in P&E, isn't that interesting? <laughs> Some of you know the story behind that. Membership, leadership, member services, and public relations. That's because you, each and every one of you, take a role in this organization to take a challenge and turn it into an opportunity. Speaking of opportunities, you know, for some of us, it's going to seem like 
we're going to have an opportunity in 2014, perhaps almost a once in a lifetime opportunity. And that is we're going to have an open seat in the U.S. Senate. And we're going to have to go to work because we've got to get to know the candidates early on. We've got to talk to them about our concerns of the role of the EPA and other federal agencies. We've got to talk to them about how important immigration and a workable guest worker program is to our organization and to Michigan agriculture. That open seat in the Senate hasn't happened for years. Senator Levin has served us when he finishes up for 36 years. 36 years, and I know that Congressman Dingell is longer than that, so. We're going into an election that has that open Senate seat. All of the U.S. House of Representatives are up for election. Three Supreme Court justices, 38 of 38 Michigan senators, 110 state house, plus the governor, lieutenant governor, secretary of state, and <coughs> the attorney general. So a challenge that we will turn to an opportunity. We have enjoyed the opportunity to work with a group that we were successful in putting in as Friends of Agriculture. And as you can see, that's been very successful. We have, we have the opportunity tonight. Governor Snyder will appear at our annual meeting for the fourth consecutive time. Don't take that for granted, folks. He likes this organization, but more importantly, he recognizes the importance of ag. Something that each and every one of us talked about for years, that they just don't recognize the importance of ag. The picture you're seeing right now is Governor Snyder at Westview Orchards. So what's the significance of that? That farm has been in that family for 200 years. And we talk about stability in agriculture and agriculture being a foundation for Michigan 200 years, think about that. The neat thing is that was the second one that has been in, two, in, been in uh, the uh, family for 200 years. Tonight we will have again a town hall, an agricultural town hall. And the governor will take text questions and you can text them in now. But that's really, uh, that's really kind of the fun part of it is. The neat part of it is the fact that he continues to recognize agriculture. I had the opportunity to get a look at a, a campaign video that he's playing, which happened to be in a group of uh, non-agricultural people. I think probably there was two or three producers there, maybe four. Uh, but I would guess that 25% of that video highlighted Michigan agriculture when he was speaking to businessmen, academia, et cetera. You know, a few years ago, the governor gave us a charge. He had an ag summit. He challenged us to get the $100 billion impact on Michigan's economy. Well, we're at 90, 91, 93. Maybe if we keep slipping it up, we'll get it there. But Pretty significant things that are happening. There's processing moving in here very quietly. Uh, Director Adams, who is here today, had the opportunity to uh, attend a groundbreaking for, I believe, a $43 million dairy plant that's going in Cass City, Michigan. You know, those investments aren't made in a climate that's not conducive to agriculture. I want you to really think about the climate that's that's been created for us here and the opportunity for us to show how we can grow to help Michigan's economy. That's why in this coming election, I urge each and every one of you, each and every one of you to take the same vow that I've taken. And that is we will work hard to make sure that we get the right people elected 
and get the right people in office who will, focus, who will continue this focus on agriculture and provide us with opportunities to grow. You know, the race to engage will certainly put us in a much better position in the future. One of the things that is detrimental for us to think about is finding fault with the past. It doesn't matter if someone's at fault because you're not going to change the past. We all have a change. We all have a chance to change the future. And we've seen you do it, and we see you do it on a daily basis, and we see you do it on your operations, and we can do it for the betterment of Michigan. So let's, again, I'm urging you to take, take the pledge to work hard to get the right people, to unite agriculture, because when we can unite agriculture, we are 500,000 votes. And 500,000 votes, folks, makes a difference. We need to work toward a positive outcome. We can't be complacent. We must race to engage. And we must make things happen. And I know each and every one of you are capable of making that happen. I want to thank you for the opportunity to, again, serve you as president and wish you the best. Thank you very much.